Everything Everywhere All at Once was a surprise hit. The film had an extremely low budget and yet managed to depict an expansive multiverse filled with complex visuals. Pay attention. How did the directing duo, the Daniels, and their team stretch their dollars and their creativity to make the sci-fi insanity that is everything, everywhere, all at once? This is how they shot it. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications to stay up to date with what we cover in the future. As we run through the film, we'll be using Studio Binder's shot list feature to populate the shot specs. Writer-directors Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, known simply as Daniels, began their career doing off-the-wall music videos and a truly original debut feature, Swiss Army Man. In doing so, they learned how to make the most out of a budget and utilize these low-budget tricks for everything, everywhere, all at once. Let's look at how they pulled it off, starting with a highly strategic way they used locations and sets. The script includes a multitude of locations. The goal then was to find one place to shoot that could be used for multiple locations. We knew we had to find one location for this film. That was the only way it was gonna get made because it's, there's too much going on for us to even consider moving production to a different location. And so they used an empty office building complex for multiple sets. All of the IRS scenes were shot here, along with the interiors for the Wong family apartment and the Alphaverse motorhome. They were also able to utilize the entire facility for various aspects of the production. In essence, the production was able to create their own makeshift studio, allowing them to shoot five out of seven weeks without a company move. When shooting on location, however, the Daniels also had to be extremely efficient. For example, using a single alley in downtown LA, standing in as Hong Kong to capture a number of shots from various moments in the script. If we're gonna go to an alleyway that's in Hong Kong, how many vignettes can we get there? Rewrote to be like, okay, while we're there, we'll get her running as a kid, her running as a kid and poking her eyes out. We'll get Waymond and Evelyn leaving, then her deciding not to leave, then her in the taxi, and then her not in the taxi. And like that was all within like about 20 feet of each other. So we were able to just be like, oh, we're gonna use this in six different places, but we're gonna shoot it in like an hour and a half. This economical approach allowed them to shoot everything they needed quickly while keeping costs low. You know, this only costs like $300, $300 this conversation. <laughs> the next step was a monumental task, visualizing the multiverse. <laughs> a crucial element that makes everything everywhere all at once feel so huge is its multiple universes, which are all designed to have a distinct feel. To do this, the Daniels relied on a diverse approach to the film's cinematography, including lens choice, aspect ratios, and color palettes. <coughs> Cinematographer Larkin Seipel had clear film references for how color separates each layer of the multiverse. For the universes, we wanted them to be like pretty darn different, so we'd make big swings of color so that when you jump between different universes, you could hopefully tell where you were. According to Seipel, the Rakokuni universe emulates the colors of Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh my God, Chad, I told you she couldn't be trusted. The Hot Dog Fingers universe was inspired by Carol. And the movie star sequence used green as a nod to Wong Kar Wai and in the mood for love. Beyond color, the camera and lenses used also played a role. Seipel shot on an Alexa Mini and primarily used Zeiss Superspeed lenses for the normal verse. For action scenes, however, he shifted over to Hawk Anamorphics. The hot dog hand scenes utilized Baltar lenses. The Wong Kar Wai scenes were shot with Canon K35s, and the ode to Kubrick's 2001 used Todd AO vintage lenses. 
Another way they mark these jumps through time and space is by changing aspect ratios. An early shift happens here when Evelyn's normal world, which is presented as 185 to 1, suddenly shifts into an action film and a wider 239 to 1 frame. It's okay. All the flashbacks are actually 4 3 in the film. Um, we wanted every time you saw a flashback to know that if it's 4 3, it means it's happened in the past or it's different, something, something's different than that. It should feel kind of more vintage in a way. Thus, the Daniels were able to create a wide variety of universes by simply adhering to different visual languages. Someone call security! And even though the imagery is full of spectacle, the team actually relied heavily on a number of practical effects. From the beginning, the Daniels understood that they had their work cut out for them. The script called for a plethora of diverse visual effects, and they couldn't afford to have it all done as CGI. This meant using a lot of practicals, including a talking raccoon now we're cooking. and those wonderful hot dog hands. But the Daniels didn't see their reliance on practicals as a handicap. There's something about things like that being 100% practical that just makes shooting it so fun and, and makes it so much easier because the actors know exactly what they're reacting to. The preference for doing it for real carried over to the fight scenes. Whenever possible, the Daniels had their actors perform all of their own stunts, even during the complex martial arts scenes. <laughs> to choreograph the action, the Daniels brought in YouTubers, the Marshall Club, who trained the actors through fights that were both exciting and amusing. They also relied on wire work, another mainstay in Hong Kong martial arts films. Using wires allowed the Daniels to create epic movements with minimal post-production work to simply remove the wires. These tricks allowed the Daniels to wow the audience without bloating their budget. Sometimes, however, they needed a little help from post-production, and with their limited budget, they relied on DIY VFX. Everything, everywhere, all at once has hundreds of VFX shots. But to keep their budget low and to retain creative control, they decided to hire a small group of filmmaker friends to handle the job. Their team consisted of just seven people, a group that learned VFX through YouTube and had been enhancing their skills over the past decade. Together, this skeleton crew handled the bulk of over 500 VFX shots. According to VFX supervisor Zach Stoltz, the aesthetic was more akin to effects that could have been done in the 80s. As the Daniels put it, less Marvel, more Ghostbusters. <laughs> One such low-tech effect can be seen in this shot. Everything above the first floor of the IRS building is a matte painting. What normally would have been done expensively as a 3D asset was done cheaply as a 2D matte in Photoshop. The most involved effect shot was the bagel, as Stoltz explains. The everything bagel was a pre-rendered element that got composited into the shot with a bunch of 2D effects layered over the top of it. The main bagel we used throughout the film was just one element we reused over and over and over again. We just messed with it in a bunch of ways to make it feel different. The Daniels themselves were very involved in the digital effects process. Daniel Kwan shot the background footage for when Evelyn gets sucked through a portal. I actually got just like a little camera, like, like a little pocket camera that shoots 4K, and it's like everywhere I went, I would just kind of walk around and just film streets. Like this, this shot of New York was just me going through New York. The camera had like shutter angle and shutter speed settings, so I just made it super blurry. The team then displayed that footage on LED panels so that the lighting on Michelle Yeoh's face matched. 
The result is a captivating moment that looks just as good as anything that cost ten times as much. By maximizing their sets and locations and doing things practically, using a variety of cinematography techniques, and only using CGI when absolutely necessary, the Daniels were able to create a beautiful-looking sci-fi film on a budget. What scene or film should we cover next? Let us know in the comments. Great. There's another great! In the description, you'll find a link to the Studio Binder blog, where we break down an early draft of the script that would have starred Jackie Chan. Subscribe to our channel for more filmmaking analysis. We'll see you around the multiverse. <laughs>